Hello everyone, so this will be the first video I'm doing on a series about how to make wine. And it's more from my own reference for later on, because I'm planning on moving and I will need a guide um, when I come back to making wine. So alright, so I have my brewing bucket and what I'm using, I've done it before with grapes, but I'm using uh, Welch's grape juice, the concentrated kind. And then I have a package of uh, yeast and then a package of yeast nutrient. Now the most important thing to stress is that you have to completely sterilize your brewing bucket and every tool that you use. So I will be using um, this jug to basically add water to the concentrate. You can make about uh, one and a half liters for every one of these things for a total of 20. And then like any sticks that I'll be using like this to, um, to stir, you have to thoroughly sterilize. So the boiling water use a kettle, and I will even go so far as to use Javax that I have, um, even like Comet, anything like that, that you have to sterilize the brewing bucket and everything that you use. Just be very thorough about that and there should be no problems. So as you can see, I've added hot, very hot soap and water. I've washed the bucket taking like a sponge and going around. The bucket doesn't need to be completely full of water. And I will do about the same thing with boiling water. Now I will boil about two kettles of water. And again, it doesn't need to be completely full of boiling water, but just make sure to go around the edge. I will demonstrate in just a second. Okay, so now I take my kettle of boiled water and make sure to go around the entire circle so that it's brushing around the edge as you can see I also take it and add it to these tools any excess that, that should be sufficient like I said you maybe do this twice just to be precautionary and some people recommend using um, a sterilizing solution like uh, cadmium tablets, but I've used this before and found that there's not really any significant difference as long as you thoroughly clean and boil everything that you use so that it is sterile and to not wait too long in between doing the boiling water and adding um, the ingredients. But Like I said, I don't anticipate too many problems. So like I said, just be very sure to be very, very thorough at this stage, the most important stage. Okay, now that I've sterilized all my instruments, it's just a matter of taking the concentrated grape juice and adding water to it into, this is about a liter here. One of these can make 1.5 or 1.3 uh, liters of juice. So I simply take off the lid. water. Being sure to use the container to extract as much of the juice as possible. And then I thoroughly stir it. Emphasis on thorough because it's, it's very cold and needs stirring. Now I just repeat this about 17 times and you would be surprised that 17 um, concentrates are enough to make about 20 to 23. I always make about um, extra, so I make about 23 even though I'm only intending to make about 20 liters of wine because there will be excess, which I will explain later. Alright, while preparing the wine, you can set up the yeast nutrient. So just simply take some boiling water put it in this with a little bit of sugar, equal amount of sugar, and put a cling foil or a, you know, some sort of wrap over it for, and leave it for approximately an hour. Now 
and be sure that the boiling water is cooled down just a little bit. You don't want it to kill the yeast. And for added security, I like to add just a little pinch of yeast nutrient. Although some people say it's not necessary, I just do it as a precaution. Now leave, we're now wrap it and leave it for about an hour. And you can tell when it's ready by the fact that it'll start to bubble at the bottom. Then you know that your yeast starter is ready. Okay, now that I've successfully made my yeast nutrient starter and filled my bucket with the juice, it's time to take a reading using a hydrometer to determine the alcohol content and how much sugar should be added. Now, I usually like to add about four cups of sugar right after um, filling it with all the concentrated grape juice and then letting it settle for half an hour while my yeast starter is um, fermenting. So now I have my lovely assistant take the uh, hydrometer reading just to demonstrate. Be sure to sterilize the uh, hydrometer with boiling water. I already did it, but just to do it twice, just to be thorough. I usually like to leave some space. I've made about 23 liters, but that will be used up when I transfer it to the demijohn. There will be residue at the bottom where all the sugar, excess yeast, and uh, matter from the concentrated grape juice will sink to the bottom. So it gives you some leeway um, in terms of it filtering out. So our lovely assistant will demonstrate taking the hydrometer reading. So just gently place it in the center and wait for it to settle. And we can see here that some of the sugar has sort of risen to the top, so we'll need to stir it around more. And you need a little bit more sugar, but it's actually pretty good. So it's actually, so we can tell by going to the line that it'll be, it's around, what, what, what was the line number at? It was one. At, at one. So we know that that's pretty close using, there's the sheet that most of the hydrometers come with that cover like what the actual measurement will be. So in this case, I just need to add another, probably a cup of sugar, right? All right, so now I added another cup of sugar and we take the reading again. Oh yeah, you're good. You're at uh, 1.2. Where's the 1.2? There. So we can see by where the juice came up to on, on the lines, by just by it sitting still, so we can tell that that's what the reading is. So that'll be probably like, sort of like what we've got before, right? Like the rosé yeah. kind. Yeah. So we don't want it too sweet or not sweet enough. So it's good now. So it's probably just needs to sit for a little bit and it'll be ready. So now we take the yeast starter and pour it into the mixture.
We also take the remainder of the yeast nutrient and pour it in as well. Being sure to thoroughly stir it. Now all that needs to happen is to leave it for about four days, four or five days, and let it ferment with the lid on. Occasionally, most lids will have a, a hole with a rubber to take, take it off, but occasionally let the lid off, let any of the gases out, and after four days it will be time to transfer it to the demijohn. this guy because he makes damn good wine.